Okay, hey everybody. Uh, let's see, we're going to get started here. And uh, welcome to this week's class for Crypto Mastery and uh, for our M3 Active Trader class. And um, basically, uh, today, this cl today's class, we're going to uh, look at both the uh, Crypto Mastery things indicators and have our Active Trader class. The uh, markets have been uh, fairly quiet. And so uh, that's what we're going to focus on today. And then I'm off to the uh, Bitcoin conference. We will talk a little bit more about that here today and so let me just pull up the chat here so i've got that with you guys and i uh, just welcome a few people here so what do we have we got lisa and uh, david glenn uh rennie okay so pirate private uh, jay all right so let's see people are still joining it looks like so um i do have a hard stop here at 145 maybe 140 or 130 we'll keep it sort of short you know we'll review some news and um you know, I just wanted to turn the camera and give you guys a quick wave, but uh, I'm going to turn the camera off here. We don't really need that. So uh, let's go ahead and dive in. If you guys have any chat uh, or any questions, uh, just put it in the chat and let me know if you can hear me. OK, um, Myrene and I always do a sound check, so it should be fine. But uh, I've got that uh, chat here in front of me. So, um, all right, well, I'm going to kill the video and let's kind of dive into some news and see what's going on the the big the tldr is there's not a whole lot happening right now but uh, i have been updating the uh, dxy uh, chart here so we kind of know where we are and we'll come back to this but uh, as always was looking around at some news so let's take a quick look at some news see what might be moving the markets or or not moving the markets as the case may be and uh, so the doj had cracked down on crypto exchanges uh, there's uh, some news here ncet i don't know really who that is and um, let's see, the National Cryptocurrency Enforcement Team. All right, that's the first time I've heard that, actually. So the Department of Justice is targeting crypto companies that engage in crimes themselves or allow crimes like money laundering to happen. So these are good things for the overall adoption for crypto. And certainly that is a fear that uh, people are having in these markets, understandably. Uh, we've been doing some surveying of the uh, markets, or our audience, rather. And that's what you guys are uh, telling us. So... Uh, that is uh, certainly one of the um, concerns that people have, and understandably so. Uh, with that in mind, uh, good thing they have the national what was it? National Cryptocurrency Enforcement Team, and help clean things up in the industry. So the sooner we get past all of the you know the big major collapses and crimes and get some regulation, then uh, these should be good things for crypto adoption. So let's see, um, Senator kind of said that already, DOG March charged, so uh, money laundering. So th these are these are sort of secondary exchanges. We don't want to get into too far down the rabbit hole. But uh, again, trying to form an overall kind of thesis here, what's going on in the markets. Of course, this is a big one that's caught everyone spooked. The U.S. is on track for a June 1st default without the debt ceiling hike. Now, we've seen this. Uh, a bunch of times before and um you know the i wonder the big question is is this the boy that cried wolf where we're like oh yeah you guys always say that and then you raise the debt ceiling and then what if they don't uh, these are very real concerns that all um you know no matter how much chart reading and watching we do we have to be mindful of the fact that we don't know and to be careful here for the next couple of weeks uh we can watch for clues in the charts and we will and um you know certainly if we start to see any kind of a bounce leading into that then um then that should be we can follow our indicators there and just to be clear on this if they do raise the debt ceiling that would mean quantitative easing essentially and depending on what form they use they do it but essentially money printing and if that happens then we should see bitcoin crypto and risk on assets go higher so we want to keep an eye out for this if for any reason they don't raise it well chaos will ensue and they've already said that so department uh u.s treasury department reiterated monday expects to be able to pay the bills for the government only through june 1st um yeah without a debt limit increase if you've been hiding under a rock the last few weeks this is the big news of the day so putting pressure on the republicans and white house to reach a deal in the coming days so you know this will either be the catalyst for a push higher or push lower and that's why these charts are looking like they could go either way. I'll just sort of jump over over here to Ethereum to illustrate that and uh, try to make some sense of that. Our indicators 
you know, are showing that uh, there's some minor support here, but we are underneath the 21 and 50 day moving averages now. And these are not bullish signals. We are having the bullish ERI, however, and the uh, caveat on this is so we have the bullish ERI. We have a TSI that's turning green, but has not broken above 20 yet. And so sometimes I'll front run this and kind of see, all right, it looks good, but um, I'd like to see us get up here. And as we've seen in the past, this can come up and reject right in here. So uh, above this 20 line on the crypto mastery indicators, very important to see that. And ideally we want to see this turn green. So um, what is good is that we are at an extreme, as it were. So uh, the lower these are when they turn, the more likely there's going to be follow through. So the signal line still trying to turn up and uh, and turn green. And of course, you know, as we see on that example, the lower they are after a bigger drop, the more significant the, the bounce is, right? So that's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's just a thing. And so I want to get it out of your minds. This is, you know, not to be necessarily fear-based and uh, hopefully you are mostly in cash as we've been talking about for the last year. So so the question is, and the comment is, you know, if we see a debt ceiling rise and so here's, but here's what I anticipate, you know, we'll push down out of uncertainty and we'll get into this little region. I've had this green buy triangle for months now and it is a ideal buy zone uh, for Ethereum, and I uh, didn't quite get down to it before, but if if we can come down here, if we sell off into this June 1st deadline, just for protective purposes, and then we start to break out of this zone and we get all of our signals aligning, that's going to be the start of a major rally, I believe. Now, is it the bottom and we keep going higher? I don't know. And I don't know that I think so. I think that there's, we'll, we'll hit resistance. We'll show you that on the Bitcoin chart, which we've been looking at. So I think we do have one more kind of push higher here. And um, let's see, I jumped ahead of myself here. Let's see, we want to finish this off. Janet Yellen confirmed that uh, unlikely to make, well, so she's saying the agency will unlikely be able to make the uh, government payment obligations by early June, triggering the first ever U.S. default. Um, yeah, uh, and the, this, so this is serious. This is, you know, but the last time it was serious and the time before that, there was a big long song and dance and the Dems, Democrats and the Republicans said, we're not going to do it. No, we're not going to agree to this. Not going to do it. And then final hours, they did it anyway. Right. So, I mean, uh, it's a very bad thing if they don't. And, and so, um, there is some talk of, of minting the trillion dollar coin, uh, and then sticking it in some secret corner of Fort Knox uh, or something like that. I don't know. I'm just speculating, but but that's a really dangerous sort of path we're taking. We start printing trillion dollar um, coins of our currency and start devaluating. However, um, and we will come back to this. We'll come back to this scenario where, as you know, this perfect storm of of how to Bitcoin could push to a hundred thousand. And I'm not saying this is likely. But we can see this chart pattern playing out. I haven't moved this around here in uh, in a couple of weeks, so it's pulling back here. And on this weekly chart, you know, we are still above this uh, this purple pink line. That is, let me just make sure I know what that is. That should be, I believe, the fifty. Uh, it's a twenty one moving twenty one uh, week moving average. Okay, so there's a bunch of these in here. It's not an EMA, it's just a 21 week, but uh, that has been somewhat significant in the past. So that is just uh, an exponent, not an exponential. The 21 week though, when we got back, back above it here, after the COVID crash, that 21 week did act as support. So this is a bullish looking chart as we're coming up out and above of the support, pushing higher. So this is a fractal pattern right here, this chart pattern, in case you haven't seen that before, that uh, could indicate what we're in store for, right? So we'll come back to this and unpack this for sure. But um, in terms of this, uh, coming back to this 21 week moving average, we're seeing that pullback. I have been saying, I expect to pull back to that 25,300 range, very key level of support and resistance. If we look left, it was support right here and resistance here and here. You see, you've got alerts there, as we can see, had trouble breaking it here, broke above it. Now it's acting as support. And really, we want to see, 
We would like to see a pullback to that 25,500 to 25,300 range and then bounce off of it. Okay. So if I had to guess, um, and I'll just purely speculation and not financial advice, but this is what I, I think will sell pullback. Maybe there'll be a scare. It'll pull it back to 25,300. It could break down below that. And then, but it may, if it ends above the 21 day on the weekly basis, in fact, that's more, it's likely we'll see something like that. Uh, as um, some kind of a surprise down below it. I don't know. They, the market makers don't like to give up their money, understandably. So, um, but we watching this 25,500 region. And if it just, if it can bounce off of here, I think it's pretty fast run to this 48K to 50K golden pocket. So we have talked about that in the past and we'll, we'll come back to this. So um, if you guys, and again, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm trying to go quick here. I'll give you guys some good download here. And again, I'm off to the Bitcoin 2023 conference here. Uh, tomorrow, if any of you uh, will be there, uh, that's going to be a great event. Going to meet up with uh, our good friend, uh, Max Wright. So, uh, you know, if you guys want to uh, try to meet us down there or uh, are going to be down in the area, I'm trying to pull up that screen here. So there's some really uh, interesting things happening at the conference here. And well, where's that window? I thought I had uh, this window open here. So BTC 2023, some great events. So that'll be there. And um, uh, let's see. Uh, and I spelled it wrong. Okay. So I'm trying to do too many things at once and multitask. All right. Well, we'll pull it up here. So uh, chances are I might be getting a press pass as well. So kind of do some interviews would be fun. Uh, all right. Just so I don't here, close that loop. There we go. Here's the Bitcoin conference. It's going to be great. 20, 30,000 people here. Some amazing speakers. Uh, it's not a commercial for this. Uh, obviously um, we're not selling tickets or anything, but um. Uh, you're going to have some great speakers. Robert Kennedy, Michael Saylor, of course. Uh, Arthur Hayes will be there. And it's not too late. You can get um, tickets here still. So if you can make it down, it's great. It's a great time to get a good reading on what's coming, what's happening. Uh, here's that guy, by the way, that was gave that presentation last year in the whale session, uh, who was uh, sp spent an hour saying Bitcoin would not go below 30,000. Uh, on according to all his on-chain metrics, he's the editor of Bitcoin Magazine, and uh, I raised my hand and said, uh, "What do you think about uh, going to twenty thousand? As some people like me believe, uh, he scoffed at me, and everyone in the room wanted to throw me out of the room, but um, I was right. So, so there you go. Um, and um, you don't see me on this list. Maybe next year, maybe next year, guys. So uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, there's a number of things going on, and you can look this up. It's at B.TC Conference. Okay, enough about that." And so let's see, oh, back to the news. So uh, let's see here. I've got, uh, I think we've covered most of this and uh, other than constitutional crisis. And um, let's see, significant risk of defaulting on the uh, obligations, nothing new. So we'll have to keep an eye on this, okay? All right, uh, let's see. We're going to cover a little bit more here. There's something here I wanted to just touch on. It's not really affecting the markets, though. It's why we're not spending too much time on it. Uh, let's see. Uh, crypto exchanges, we talked about that. I'll take this off. And we've got World Bank suspends $1 billion worth of project funding uh, in the Congo. I, yeah, I'm not, not really relevant. SEC responds to Coinbase requests for all fraction, saying uh, no. And... Um, you know, there's going to be a big battle brewing with the SEC. I don't know why they're trying to push all of these exchanges off shore, but they are doing a good job. And if they were a sales and marketing company, I would say congratulations. You are should be made manager of the sales prevention department. Some of you will get that on the way home. Um, it's, uh, but the SEC is really just not under the guise of protecting consumers. Uh, they are making it difficult and driving in the biggest exchanges away from the U.S. I can't imagine why they would be doing that. Think of all the lost tax revenue, which honestly we need. And so uh, they have uh, SEC filed suit against the SEC with a complaint alleging the agency is to uh, or forcing them to establish regulatory clarity for the industry. Right. So good thing you would think SEC issued response Coinbase complaint requesting agency establish regulatory clarity. So basically they're saying, yeah, no, we're not going to do that. Um, makes no mistake. It makes no sense to me. So um, Coinbase asserts the court should compel the commission to act on Coinbase's recently filed rulemaking petition. You know, and, and this, uh, you know, uh, the SEC recently filed Wells notices 
against Coinbase, and that usually comes ahead of some kind of investigation, a deeper investigation. So this is going to be some political arm wrestling here. I'm sorry, not political. Well, it is sort of political, I guess, but uh, regulatory and arm wrestling there. So um, I'm just trying to dig out, pull out the uh, key points here. So uh, agency continued deliberating, a lot of red tape and bureaucracy, uh, what will affect the crypto assets and securities markets takes time. Uh, I don't know, you know, um, maybe they have to consult Jamie Diamond, who's buying everything and doesn't want to have his empire toppled, right, at JP Morgan. So, <clears throat> you know, this is just going to take some time. Uh, yeah, here's their suit. Uh, Coinbase filed their suit in response to a Wells notice exchange received in March 2022. Uh, incidentally, and you know, I've been telling you guys and showing you that uh, the officers at Coinbase have been dumping Coinbase stock as far back as December in large quantity, probably had some uh, heads up uh, headwind that this Wells notice was coming. Perfectly legal as long as they file the uh, proper forms that are publicly listed. And uh, there was that software we shared with you guys that can show you that. But um, anyway, uh, okay, look, hey, look at this digital assets summit coming to Washington, D.C. Well, that'd be fun. That's next year. Let's see. So, hey, I'm going to open that in a new tab. I'm going to I'm going to go to that because I'm here. Uh, if any of you guys want to come out to the any events, I would recommend coming to events. But uh, here's one in Washington, D.C. And uh, I would imagine Brock Pierce will be here because he has a uh, uh, a residence here, but um, not much more information. So we'll skip off for that. So uh, let's see. SC Coinbase hasn't proven SEC needs to create crypto specific rules. And, um, you know, you guys can dig up this news on your own. I just want to get a feel for what's happening out there. Let's jump over to uh, the, the Cointelegraph uh, dashboard, by the way. And uh, we're going to be doing some cool stuff with these guys and specifically uh, one of their people that works there that helped build this uh, this platform. So we might even make a version for us. Kind of cool. All these things on one page. Uh, they have a watch list. Um, not here to promote it here, but um, Newsquakes uh, is something else. Well, maybe we'll do a webinar on this, but mostly on the uh, what I want to do. This you know kind of shows you what's moving, but I'm looking for the news here. So buy in May, don't don't stay away. So this is interesting. Usually you hear buy in May, go away in the stock market. You know all the big traders, you know, they go off to their houses in the Hamptons, they sell everything in May, and they go away till September. So this article is saying um, buy in May, don't go away. So that's interesting. Let's see the end of the reserves hiking cycle. So that is also worth no noting that um, uh, very likely they will not raise again here in the uh, June meeting. Um, and so there's something to be uh, aware of when they when they stop raising, it can cause markets to go higher. However, and when they start easing, Usually that means they've broken something in the market's tank again. So uh, this uh, this doesn't mean it's time to start dump buying everything. I think May is uh, good to sit out. You know, we want to watch our indicators, but I think June, July, we see some kind of a bounce. And then we just have to keep an eye on this debt ceiling thing and uh, see what happens. Because as I mentioned uh, in the uh, Active Trader chat last week, I was watching Jim Rogers. And um, last uh, week at an event, uh, Jim's great. He... Um, He's a bit of an old, I mean, he's not quite Buffett in terms of being an old grumpy curmudgeon. Um, I, I think Jim is a little bit more forward thinking, but he 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 answered a question uh, about crypto and said he didn't believe in crypto. But then he answered the next question about his investment thesis. And this has nothing to do with what I'm showing on the screen here. But he basically contradicted himself and said, but uh, his best investments have been buying high growth assets with potential in the future when they are cheap uh, so you know I, I was tempted to yell out bitcoin like bitcoin but it wasn't the right moment and it was kind of in in respect with, with respect to jim rogers he's uh, he's the man he's um, a co-partner of the quantum fund uh with um uh, Mr. Soros, as uh, somebody asked him, as he talked to George Soros in a while, and he said, they paused, he said, I have not spoken to Mr. Soros in 30 years. So um, uh, that uh, was interesting. I'm just, I'm slowing down here. because This is, so Michael Burry apparently is, is not shorting regional banks. He's loading up on regional banks. Huh. Interesting, because I heard, I was thinking, I was hearing the opposite. Regional banks were in big trouble because they wouldn't be bailed out. All right. 
Uh, what's the point of this? So basically, we're getting, we don't want to spend too much time on the news. So hold on, horse to maximum by Fed. Fed may not be done, but it's looking increasingly like it is. And uh, real policy rate is now positive. Nominal rates higher than inflation. Banking stress continues to ho- hoover velocity from the system, tightening credit. So uh, the here's, here's the TLDR. The Fed's rate risk reward is starting to favor a cessation of the rate hiking cycle after 500 basis points of increases in a little over a year. Uh, so uh, that's enough about that. But um, anyway, let's just touch on this real quick. And he goes by Cassandra BC on uh, Twitter, by the way. So he says, this time is different. I don't know. This one I might unpack later. Um, ah, look at this. Interesting. One day uh, before the dovish Powell presser sent stocks surging higher in what to this date remains the biggest short squeeze in a decade boosted by historic. So one word sell that was on January this year. But uh, Spikes deleted the tweet, but his entire account. Interesting. So yeah, I, he did. He disappeared. So when Starks stock spiked higher, Burrow, uh, Burry <laughs> promptly deleted the tweet. He has, he's famous for tweeting things and then deleting it. He deleted his tweet and his entire Twitter account and then reactivated it. Uh, let's see. I think um, that's, we're going down a rabbit hole here. Uh, okay, so let's do this. Just jump back on any other news. So integration chain link, Bitcoin Lightning Company. Let's see, latest news. Uh, I do like the editorial on Coin Telegraph. They do a good job, but it's not clear this is the best way to find it here. Jet Yellen is bluffing about the running out of money by early June. Okay, so that's interesting. You know, because if that's the case, the markets are going to surge. So I want you guys to be ready for that. Um. <clears throat> Oh, by the way, for who's where are my conspiracy theorists? I have some uh, some interesting stuff for you guys. <laughs> uh, would it be? Uh, would you like to see a possible uh, article that the NSA uh, is responsible for uh, Bitcoin? I don't know. Just keep this thing fun and interesting. Go put your go grab your tin hat, guys. Let me see. I'm going to find this. Uh, where did I see that? Um, I think it's in my Facebook Messenger, and I don't dare pull that up on camera because you never know what your weird friends are going to post on your Facebook feed. Um, let me see if I can find this. Uh, shoot, I can't remember where who sent that to me and where that was. It might be on my Instagrams. So let me look for that. But if you don't want to see it, I don't want to uh, bore you with that. Let's see messages here. Let me pull those up. Uh, Pir- uh, Pirate J. Private says, I won't be at the conference, but I'd sure love to treat you and Max to a beer sometime. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we'll make that a steak dinner. If you want to come down, we'll go to SDK, a uh, great steakhouse in Miami that ran into BitBoy there last year. Uh, he's a nice guy. I think he's 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 in the he's in the parts of the right place. A lot of people hating on BitBoy. I like I think he's a good good guy. Uh at any rate, um, you know. <clears throat> Shoot, I had all that build up for that big uh, conspiracy theory, and now I can't find it. So I'll dig that up for you guys and put it in the Active Trader chat. How about that? Um, because I replied to that person, and uh, oh, I know who it is. All right, I hate to give up on something uh, because how you do anything is how you do everything. I'm not going to give up. I remember it was a guy that I met last week who has a hedge fund, a crypto hedge fund, and uh, we may be. Um, Doing some work with them. Oh, shoot. I'm, I'm trying to find it. Wentz, that's the wrong one. I've got multiple Skypes from him. And now I'm burning time. I apologize, you guys. Where? Maybe it was a text and that would make it problematic. All right, guys. Let, let me move on. I'll find out. Um, you can always Google it. Uh, all right. Suspense is killing me. Tin, ta- tin hat on. Fuck it. Okay. All right. Now we got to find it, you guys. Uh, yeah, I was at this event, you know, and you you connect with people on all these different platforms through text and messenger and Instagram. And um, so I am now uh, at this point on my, yeah, it was a text. So the link, I have the link. I've copied the link and I'm going to put the link in the active trader group. So if you're not an active trader, because some of you are just on crypto mastery. 
and uh, we'd like to uh, have more of this type of commentary and uh, fancy tin hat conspiracy theory links all that stuff you can go to um, moonstream.io slash m3 and i know i'm stalling here but here's the link here moments away here it is uh now this is a very ugly old page from but look at this uh, anonymous um this person got the nsa's permission to report this link from 1996 october 31st halloween 1996 how to make a mint the cryptography an anonymous electronic cache and national security agency office of information security research and technology 1996 you guys i have not read all of this but you can see this electronic cache uh on trace let's see public key cryptography so uh untraceable electronic payments i mean i don't know tin hats on you guys what do you think here um i'll the link is in the m3 chat okay so you guys can read that later i don't want to uh, use all of our time on this class here and we move some stuff out of the way so i can give that some contacts but i'm gonna say in the chat there it's 10 hat only a created and is satoshi question mark well i don't know hopefully we will know one day electronic cash um yeah, uh, yeah, it's funny because Jim, uh, um, Jim, shoot, where is this? I have his book over my desk. I just said his name, uh, but um, he he was calling it computer cash, computer money. So, you know, it sounds like the internet early in the day. So you guys can look at that later. I, I'm not going to go through it, but um, yeah, as in any payment system, there's potential here for criminal abuse. So, I um, mean, we'll see how this plays out. Okay. There's a whole bunch in here, and I haven't read it all, so I'm not going to make any uh, uh, any um, notations, but there's lots of references in here. Untraceable offline cash in wallets with observers, 1993. So this is not as new as we seem to think, right? And so let's hope it's the NSA and uh, not China and Russia. How about that? All right, you guys, let's move off the news here. Let's dive into our charts and uh, hopefully that was interesting. And um, uh, we, you know, I was thinking it was the CIA, but uh, you know, those are all kind of related, I guess. And uh, DXY. So we have the DXY pushing up. So no um, surprise that crypto is kind of pulling back down in. I think the Dixie could push up higher here. And uh, certainly, you know, we have some momentum for that got above this level. So if the DXY pushes up, that would coincide with a pullback in Bitcoin only to see the DXY reject here at this 103 and a half level. And if the DXY then tanks, then that means Bitcoin rallies. And we we are waiting, have been waiting to get into the super pump rally zone. And, um, you know, these Bitcoin DXY in, uh, you know, they're, they run in, um, um uh, <clears throat> uh, inverse relationships but the the correlation has been somewhat less in this range but i do my spidey sense is that it, this is what happens the xy pushes higher and then it rolls over okay now i'm not sure how the potential default would factor into the dxy going higher or lower maybe some of you have done more research and uh, ks if you're out there uh, uh, you always have good um, comments on that you maybe have an idea have not researched it except been on the road yeah, I thought I had COVID last week. It may have had a mild version. By the way, never fun. Uh, so let's take a look at the uh, monthly chart of Bitcoin. Okay, so uh, let's see. What do we have going on here? I'll just zoom out a bit. This is a on a monthly basis, the uh, the Fibonacci golden pocket. So from the market cycle high down to the bottom, then uh, this would put the Fibonacci retracement. This is that 618 to 0.65 golden pocket. That would be the target for any bounce, any meaningful bounce, if we can get above 32K. So we have this really important level here, which was support flipped as a resistance right around this 32K level. If you look over on the right hand side, came back down, found the market cycle low, I believe, pushed up higher, rejected around 32K, which I saw. I, suggested that we would see had four green monthly candles up so it's normal and 
a good thing that we're pulling back here. Uh, it is a bearish engulf engulfing candle on the monthly. But if we can come down here in this 25.5 region, again, support midpoint of this vector candle support back here in May. So, so this midpoint to come down a third 25.5, um, I, you know, like we saw in the last chart on the weekly, uh, would be a good thing. And then if, as long as we bounce off of it, and get back above that 32k above 32k pretty fast moving 48k i believe you know might see some trouble right in here around 38.4 which was support 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 that finally broke down back in there so you know a little hiccup and then pushing higher potentially i mean i don't know i'm not mm, not uh i see say uh, crypto i'm not clairvoyant i was gonna say um uh despite the crypto damas uh <laughs> moniker that um i i need to re-earn my hat wearing um um what is the right word there drawing a blank here it's kind of hard being on the road guys brain cells are not really working as well my uh crypto damas hat wearing privileges thank you very much brain for coming in and pinch all right so here we have the uh, monthly chart, and uh, we didn't look at some news here. Uh, mass and Bitcoin withdrawal, 800 million. Um, all right. So withdrawn from ex But that isn't a bad thing. If they take it off of exchanges, that means they want to hodl it, not sell it. So this doesn't make sense um on coinbase all right it's not immune significant this this is an odd article a uh, massive transfer likely to be attributed to a single whale I wonder if it's michael saylor uh <laughs> but but i don't know but this this the, this is a weird title i mean that would indicate um bottling okay pepe may signal trouble for btc uh when she finishes, okay we're not gonna do that um, let's look at our indicators. So what do we have here on a monthly basis? We're a bit overbought here on the ERI. And so what is also worth noting is if the ERI on a monthly basis drops below 80, then we could get a bearish ERI. Uh, however, we are just now, you know, we're still in a clear uptrend on the monthly TSI. This is what, this is my strongest feel for the fact that we continue higher here, you guys. Uh, we we only have the last three market cycles to go by, but on these monthly, you know, when in doubt, zoom out. And um, see if I missed any uh, questions here. Also, concern for keeping on exchange, exchange risk. KS is saying, um, yeah, okay, well, that's a fair question or comment. Um, KS says that uh, you know could indicate concern of keeping uh, money or crypto on an exchange and if it was on coinbase well that would make sense certainly and be prudent if the sec and coinbase are locking horns here uh you know well that's david and goliath taking your money uh, off of the uh exchange would be a good idea your bitcoin rather not your keys not your crypto yeah thanks for pointing that out uh so so here we have this um now we, but we are in uncharted territory. You know, we we just need to see what happens here. But um, you know, show me the chart. I'll tell you the news. We st we we have our signal line still green, and a and a fairly significant dip down. So this would still tell me until it until it changes that we are headed higher here. You know, it's kind of losing its velocity here a little bit, and um. Let me just open this up here, but it's still pushing higher. You know, when in doubt, zoom out. So this this still looks bullish to us, guys. So let's let's take a closer look here and zoom in a bit. And I'll, I'll get to some coins as well. So I've got um, I've got another hour, so we've got time. But uh, I know everyone's busy. So you know, just looking at this, not a whole lot happening here. Down a half a percent. You know, nothing really moving in our list. Everybody's waiting to see which way this thing breaks. This thing breaks. So uh, again, on this uh, monthly basis here, RSI, and I'm trying to open the RSI up. Well, let's just look at it in the weekly. There's not a whole lot to garner from all that. All right, so here we have the weekly basis. So let's uh, dive into this. We've got the 200-week moving average holding the 200-week moving average. That's good. I'll turn off some of the, the uh, drawings so you can see that a bit easier. But, you know, this is good. You know, it's not... 
exploding, but we have broken and, and we're holding that 200 week moving average, that all important 200 week moving average. Now we do have this bearish ERI right in here, but I'm more bullish that we're holding this line. Now, if we do come back to retest that 25.3 level, um, you know, I think we really want to make sure we see a bounce there because we don't want to close on a weekly basis below that uh, level. Do you guys get that? So uh, radar is mixed. We could touch down upon it. So this is why, you know, I want to give you the signals to watch for, and you can make notes on your charts as well. I encourage you to do that because you won't remember everything I say. So, you know, I want to say watch or weekly hold and above 200 week moving average, right? So and you can do a shift return to do that. Okay, so basically that's that's significant, right? And because if it starts to close below the 200 weekly, we got trouble. And, and if that's the case, so so here's what we have all you know allegedly playing out. We either have a pullback and hold there, and then we go higher. Or we could have a weekly head and shoulders forming. And uh, we're just not going to know here for a little bit, guys. I can't. Uh, well, all I can do is give you the signs to watch out for. And, um, you know, this level here is so important to hold. Okay, because if it, if it comes down into this range and then it pushes higher in the 25.5 axis resistance, then our potential target on a head and shoulders measured move if this is the head and this is the neckline the neckline may not be uh let's just say it's more like this okay may not be flat <clears throat> but uh i mean that would be bad that would take us to 15k potentially we could revisit the lows of the summer if that if the head and shoulders plays out so swing we were going to be swing trades i guess the point of this is don't be not financial advice, but I would not be itching to go all in and buy at this level. I think having a reasonable investment, even limit orders in at 25.5 with a tight stop loss is a prudent move and, and ideally watching our indicators, okay? Because uh, we are overbought on the weekly TSI. So we have, this would indicate we have more downside. Now, if you guys want to play the downside and make some money, I mean, you could do that. Uh, with the 3x longs but zooming out i want to call your attention to this pattern here back in october 2020 when it came down and we bounced so uh, otherwise though it typically will go full cycle all down the bottom once twice three times four times but this level here not only was support but also uh, uh resist uh, sorry support and resistance so this uh 62 level on our tsi give or take so we're coming right down into this. I, I would wait and see, you know, if we start to see a bounce here, let's say we hit the 25.5 and start to bounce. Well, then we're getting that bullish scenario bounce. And that's when you want to be, I would be ready to get into some of your coins that you've identified. And we'll look at some of those today. Uh, this is a really messy chart here. I know you guys, hang on, let me open this up here. So this is what I was indicating here. Same kind of thing, a head and shoulders possibly playing out on this RSI. We need to see if it holds. Uh, so we'll keep you posted on that. And uh, on the stochastics RSI was pontificating, speculating it that we might hold in this range doesn't look like that. So this also looks like we, we will have further downside. Uh, but we called that top here. See these on the weekly basis, stochastics RSI, it comes tends to come up in double tap, you know, and then this region reject doesn't it rejects in this region, especially the double tap. So we had that double tap up here. And so we're coming back down. And um, if we were, you know, these patterns tend to play out. So the the ones that are more likely to go full cycle, it looks like, are the ones that double tap. And I, I use that as a sort of, um, you know, retesting resistance up here. Double tap here, came all the way down. Double tap here, down, down. So the more recents are more relevant. So, but here, spent some time up in there, rejected twice, full cycle down double tap full cycle down so it's it's more than likely we do see this continuation back down into this range however you might see saying well that sucks brad i wanted to be bullish and make money by now well i hear you but we have to be patient and what i'm going to do is set an alert here see if we get 
when it gets back down below because we're going to want to know that and start looking for bullish opportunities let's say below 6.50 on the stochastics rsi on the weekly basis uh everyone good uh let's see new comment here okay it says if whoever owns that wallet is not ready to liquidate um best keep private wallet and not on the exchange yeah exactly even if no impending real concern still good practice not keep large holdings on, on a single exchange and be target for exchange stability or regulatory risks yeah you know especially since coinbase and brian anderson came out last year and said hey uh, we're fine but uh, <laughs> you know but but uh you know we're not responsible if we go bankrupt you, you could lose all your crypto so it's like yeah we're we're, we're probably okay but um you know i mean but if if there's a mad rush to withdraw though are they okay i mean 800 million nothing to sneeze at so all right so basically um this is that uh my traffic my trading view rather pontification here uh on uh, where we would go i showed you this if you haven't if you want to bookmark this and see hold me accountable i'll drop that in the uh, chat in the um, active trader just see if this plays out because uh, I had pushed, I had posted it here. When you hit play, you can see how it does. So, so far it's pulling back kind of like I was, I had overlaid that. Now, don't guarantee this thing happens, but you know, I don't know. I have, I have, a, I have a feeling, you know, I have a feeling this is, this could be the path. And then you all owe me a steak dinner. Uh, you know, it could be Sizzler. I'll take it um, for a, uh, for a nice filet though anyway making me hungry you, you can tell i'm hungry you guys uh looking forward to seeing max uh down in um miami and uh uh taking him for a steak dinner so <clears throat> anyway um so here's this like uh this again so this is the chart of it so we already looked at this ethereum let's take a look at eth here on a weekly basis so i'll just zoom out on that how many of you are you guys how many of you are trading bitcoin how many of you are watching eth and how many of you are waiting for the alts to come back around I, you know our our north star is usually going to be eth and bitcoin uh let's see we got some news bull breaking above this level might trigger bullish momentum uh i'm not going to talk about pepe i just uh it's it's not something we want to really watch so the weekly uh of of ethereum is above the 50 week so that's still bullish the daily I had posted in the active trader group, I think 1700 would be a fair point to re-enter, um, but have a stop loss, you know, but this is more bullish that it's staying above the 21 and 50 day. We'd love to see a rocket here. Uh, and, um, but you know, our TSI is heading down. When in doubt, stay out. I'd say that is, uh, you know, one to kind of hold off. We're in a waiting pattern here, but um Bitcoin on the weekly kind of seeing this sort of pattern a TSI going lower. I mean, it's not a bullish pattern. This would indicate more downside for Bitcoin. And uh, we will get to uh, our master, our active trader list here in a moment. <clears throat> and uh, let's see, but um, you're not really seeing much in the trend indicator starting to turn down. So, you know, um, We've got a bearish ERI and a bearish TSI on the weekly. So it's uh, that signs point toward lower prices. So if you are going to take any longs, please be careful. And now for some reason, I've got what a four hour. Oh, this was that chart that I think uh, Sam had created that chart layout where he's got the chart on the left. This is a four hour chart. And then on the right hand side, now you guys could be taking swing trades. These things do oscillate on a swing basis. Now I had overlaid this as a possible path for Matic and it did not play out. So this pattern broke is breaking down. So Polygon Matic breaking down out of its upward trending uh, channel. So not looking entirely bullish, although you could be watching this on the other side for having your, all your indicators on, uh, on one side here. So ERI green, TS, TSI red, signal red, the chart of the, the coin over here. And we could change this to daily and see what it does so um but yeah polygon matic breaking out down below so matic not looking good here and not not one to be long so we were speculating does this look like it could push higher so again stop losses are critical in these markets now it's true though that this is kind of a sloppy lower boundary 
So since that one failed, we can widen it, but I would not be, you know, you, you could play this on the indicators, but not, this is not looking bullish here. <clears throat> so uh, maybe we'll keep that open and come back to it. So let's see. So we have this again, this is the theorem I had uh, suggested 1700. We have a bullish ERI on the daily and we're, we're trying to get one. I'm watching Ethereum as kind of looks strongest to me, but I'd want to see this thing break up above 20. I'm going to set an alert. And uh, crossing up above 20.1, and I'm going to do it once per bar close. I want to see one. I want to know every time that happens. But big question mark is if we push, pull back down to that $1,700 level, again, on the weekly, that would put it below the 200 week. But on this daily, if we start seeing these line up, then, you know, then I think you could see a nice bounce. But it does look to me like we head lower down to the support region and then get a bounce. Okay, so again, you want to see, wait for that TSI to cross the 20 line. Signal is still red, so this is not, not a buy. Uh, so, you know, I'm um, just looking at some shorter term time frames. We just looked at that a little bit. I don't want to get into the super short time frames. It's just going to give everyone a headache, headache including me. Uh, I have not been day trading these markets. It's um, been low volume and, uh, you know, just when it's sell in May, I think it's kind of one of those scenarios. So I'll take a quick look at the AI coins just to see. Now, Render's been doing some interesting things. Let me get this on a daily. Uh, this is more for our, what happened here? Where's my uh, my layouts? Something went a little haywire there. So this is a view only chart for some reason. Why is that? Okay, no worries. Uh, here we are, AI coins. We've got Render. <clears throat> what is Render doing? Render um, bearish engulfing, sorry, well, uh, bearish ERI, sorry, forgive me, and uh, TSI turning lower. We're getting a key and a bell. Uh, this is a weekly. Let me jump over to a daily here. Probably uh, better to watch this on the daily basis. Out of the AI coins, the render's up 6%. I do look for strength in bear markets and when everything's weak, but that's not strong enough to me. I mean, this is sort of turning higher. You, you could consider a swing trade, but um, let me, let's look at this. So render token. Well, we've got a bullish engulfing candle. We've got it. Uh, we've got almost a rocket, but not really. It's rejecting at the 21 day. Uh, we had a bullish ERI here. We have a TSI breaking 20. So if you're, if you're a perma bull and you want to maybe play to the long side, a render coin is showing some signs of strength. Let's see what's any news on this. Um, and really useless headlines there. So, so basically, if you're going to do something like this, you know, you can, but you want to keep your, your stop losses tight and, you know, I'll let this thing run up to here. So it's almost a three to one risk to reward ratio, almost. But, um, you know, I would wait to see that close above the 21 day moving average today before entering keeping a tight stop loss. Let's see if we can tighten it up a little bit. Maybe we can tighten it up a little bit just below, below of this candle here of today. So now we have a 3.13 risk reward ratio. Uh, you know, uh, you could, you could if, if the markets were stronger, I'd say we'd shoot for some higher price targets, right? But, uh, but they're not, you know. Uh, AI coins have been on a tear since the beginning of the year. Uh, that's one you could consider. I'm not going to make a specific buy recommendation on it, but it's uh, out of all of these looks strongest. And um, uh, the rest of these, uh, I'm not really going to, I'm not going to focus on. Let's look at the, our, let's look at our M3 extra trader list here. So if you guys are in crypto master, you're getting a special treat here, you're getting a glimpse into the M3 trader class because I'm doing them together this week. Let's take a look at Litecoin. Uh, Litecoin on a bit of a push higher. What's going on there? Now, Hey guys, you know, Litecoin, we've been talking about, look at this Litecoin showing strength here. We have the ERI TSI signal is green, the key and a bell. All right. Uh, Litecoin in the buy zone, Matic not in the buy zone. Uh, so, but let's, this, this I think is buy worthy. Strange, isn't it? But, um, uh, you know, 
Why is Litecoin prices up? Doesn't matter. It's up. It's up above the 21 day and the 50 day moving average. Somebody's accumulating Litecoin. Okay. So, and, and it's in this great big, let's open this up here, you guys. Upward trending channel here. And we've been watching this for months now. And uh, this, is, this is one I think is very tradable. I would suggest considering this as a buy because your risk reward ratio here is favorable. Our signals are aligning. We have TSI pushing higher. And, you know, uh, what we want to do here, we've got a signal, we've got, but we've got all of the signs here. Signals green, getting a bell on the daily. So what would we want? But the, here's the caveat. If the upside may be limited at this red line. Yeah, that's that's the biggest downside. Let me turn off the ERI here because we have this major resistance level. So what's happening is we're getting this looks like a symmetrical wedge here. So um, uh, I got excited there for a minute, but um, you know the the markets are going to largely follow uh, each other. And um, I'm just looking for other clues here. Let's look at the weekly. And um, <clears throat> pardon me. So uh, weeklies, we're getting a weekly ERI though. Um, I would keep an eye on this. It's interesting. The TSI is red. Uh, the light, Litecoin showing a nice bullish candle there on the weekly. I'd like to... <clears throat> see the TSI go green, but but this so this is what I think happens. So I and bottom line is I think Litecoin pushes up here and gets rejected back up here. So the question of the day is what kind of a move is that? If you were to buy it here and it went to this line, it's only a 10% move. And if your stop loss was right here, you know, it's not it's not a very good risk reward ratio, is the only thing. It's only like a two. If you're open to a two to one risk reward ratio, uh, then that might be playable. And, and you could certainly look at the three X longs on Litecoin. Uh, it has some nice momentum here, but upside is limited. What else could we do, you guys? What else could we do and should we do? Because what else, this midpoint here is also the midpoint of this upward trending trade channel. So, would it be a good idea to have an alert on a break above that? Let's just move this around a bit. Just have a, a wider look, okay? So I'm um, going to hide the ERI. So basically, th this level here, I'm going to move an alert a little bit above this because we've got this high and this high. Let me just draw this for you. You know, that, that region. So I'm not really that. If, if we can break above 105, Call it 105 cents, 75. That's fine. Crossing up on Litecoin, then, then that would be a possible buy. You know, it's but it would be also be also a place where we'd be topping out. So this is one of those where at first it looked exciting. Now it's not looking so exciting. Um, trying to get above its Ichimoku cloud, but uh, the, the Tenkin's crossing the Kijin to the downside, so not uh, not looking good. You've got a whole lot of mixed signals here, you guys. I don't know. Good to sharpen the saw though, and this is helpful. Yes to what to look for how to read these charts how to read the tea leaves we have some more questions here uh let's see all three david says bitcoin eth a few alts okay uh we can look at some alts david if you want to throw those out uh i'm all about luna's classic lol well it's a lottery ticket but don't hold your breath private and um um is there a having event coming up for litecoin uh, i don't know okay yes, it's a good question and why is the price up today uh, it's entry to, to the thriving nft mania so it's nft token standard litecoin ordinals oh, okay well, that's interesting they're copying bitcoin similar to bitcoin's ordinals allows people to mint you know so that's what's why it's up but that's interesting Hard to keep track of all of these developments, isn't it, you guys? But uh, but hey, I'll keep an eye on it. Good to uh, watch these things. So uh, let's take a look at our buy zone. We've got ETH. We've got Litecoin, uh, Cpool. Not really. Let's see. What do our indicators show on Cpool? 
Um, uh, you know, it's interesting on CPOL here. We've got a base. We have a bullish ERI and a TSI oversold TSI. So this is where I say, what it, well, what did it do last time? I had a little spike when it last time this happened. 30%. So you might want to keep an eye on CPOL there if we if we can break above the 20 line on that uh, TSI. But pretty thinly traded, light volume. Not sure why I have volume but turned off. Let's turn that back on. It's not a whole lot there. And uh, but it is has this nice W bottoming pattern forming. So here and here, you know, I think I think if you like C pool, that was one of our picks. It's it's holding this zone. This is an accumulation zone. And uh it certainly would indicate and seem as if uh that it's being accumulated in here. Would it not? And um, so that's uh, that's encouraging. And um, uh, sorry, guys, I have a what I thought was a two p.m. appointment, but it's possible I got that wrong, and it's one, and I have to wrap things up, and that would be. Uh, pardon me, guys. This whole travel thing has been weird today. Let me just double check something on my calendar because I can't miss this appointment again. But we've covered everything, you guys. And uh, I will do a video tomorrow if I need to. Uh, yeah, no, my, my appointment shows for 2 p.m. Forgive me, you guys. This is important. And um, double checking something. Any questions, you guys? Any questions at all? Uh, see, okay, says there is a having coming up. And, um, okay, so it's at 2 p.m. I have more time. Um, but the uh, thing's not responding. So anything else here? We've got uh, near... And... Um, Near's not looking good. Looks like that's coming back down as well. You know, there's, I don't know that we want to go through these, Adam. They're all going to look the same. These are all bearish. So, you know, we don't have a whole lot of new information on these. And uh, so let me know if you want to look at anything else. Anything, you guys? Um, I have 60 messages. Sorry about that. Let me get this down. So, all right. You want to look at uh, FTM? We can do that. Let's see. Also, AVAX, Saul. Okay. And uh, sorry, guys. It's, uh, there we've got uh, Saul. Favorite. What's my favorite beer? I don't drink a lot of beer. Um, I like Dosecchi's. I don't know. I was having one down in Miami last week. Uh, helium. Um, more of a Cabernet and uh bourbon guy, but all right, guys, let's look at uh Phantom Coin here. So, sorry about that little confusion. I just uh missed this uh telehealth call once before, I can't miss it again. All right, um, <clears throat> I'm fine by the way. So, um, Phantom Coin, so we've got Phantom Coin on a daily basis, we've got an ERI, we've got a TSI starting to form, it wants to. Uh, you can have your alert set on uh, on this right to when it crosses above 20 on phantom coin and let's see now the way i like to do this on the tsi is add alert on the tsi entry crossing up above the 20 line so i like to do it and you could do once per bar close if you want to know every time it does that or only once okay so once that crosses up above we'll know phantom coin then would be looking stronger and uh, let's see bulls break 50 cents resistance uh, i think that's old news though not there now and uh, crucial support bulls bears 
blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, you know, show me the chart. I'll tell you the news. What do we have? We've got a bullish ERI. Check. You know, hopefully you guys are using your checklist too. We've got mostly green on the radar. So you might want to watch this on a four hour. And, um, you know, again, though, I'd want to see TSI above 20, but the signal is green. So Phantom Coin's looking pretty good. Let me turn off this ERI, though. This chart is a bit wonky, though, isn't it? All right, turn this off. Uh, there's not, I was hoping there'd be some kind of meaningful support from way back when. Well, there might be. You know, it's always good to zoom out, right? So just drawing this without trying to make it match, but um yeah i don't know i mean that doesn't really fit we could uh, kind of fits yeah okay um wor worth noting kind of a sending triangle symmetrical triangle here so um you know i'd want to i want to have an alert here 45 cents here when it breaks up above that uh, and that would be sort of above the 21 and 50, because that's the thing. I, I don't like to go long when things are below their 21 and 50 day EMAs. So, you know, this is one of those scenarios where you, if you like Phantom Coin long term, who wouldn't? And you want to start accumulating down in this range, but not go all in. I really want you guys to promise me you're not going all in and all out. I mean, that's an amateur's game. This is an accumulation liquidity pocket. If we stretch this out, this is a, you know, professional traders probably accumulating in here. You'd want to have a stop loss right in this range if it breaks down below this area. But to start building and adding to a position as it goes higher, selling into strength is the name of the game. Okay, so, but wait for it, right? Wait for it, as they say, for a break above 20 on the TSI. How's the weekly look? Um, you know, weekly's over is approaching oversold. So at some point, we're going to start seeing this accumulation again on a weekly basis. Those are the biggest moves. We discovered that accidentally. We're sort of, we weren't really watching that. I've told the story, but last year when everything else was going down, Cosmos was going up. And I said to Joe, what's going on here? He said, look at the weekly TSI. The weekly is where you're going to catch those accumulations when things are oversold, more follow through. Because the daily is we see these whipsaws, right? And uh, so you want to wait to wait for this. But it's it's mad when when the daily and the weekly TSIs match, that's magic. Because that's when you get a breakout and a continued extended move. But I will also point out Pardon me, that um, I do not like this 21-day rolling over, 50-day rolling over. I do not like that. Um, so, you know, fortune favors the brave. If you like phantom coin, and who wouldn't? Like, this is a zone to start dabbling. Use your dollar cost averaging worksheets. And I would be adding to the position above this level because that would also be above the 21 day. If you get a rocket, maybe add more. If you're getting above the 50, adding more. And then, you know, we're selling into strength or we're holding, hodling a position. You can run it up to this area. So it's all about those risk reward ratios. If you think this is, you know, uh, the. There's that thing doing this again. I thought it maybe it fixed itself, but this, I don't know why it does that. All right. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So the point is tight stop losses there, but that is a, can't be, 700 and, two, it's a 271 risk reward. No, wait, I did that wrong. Risk reward ratio is 26. That's pretty good. Right, because there's if it can break out of this congestion here, Phantom Coin a pretty fast run up to this level at a to a dollar. I'd, I'd be getting out at a dollar, right, dollar ten. But you know that's a twenty six, twenty seven risk reward ratio. Um, I would take that bet. I'd wait for a green TSI down here. Looks like it could fall a bit more though, and if it falls, then then what happens? So it might be losing this trend line support, you know, and then I wouldn't be taking the trade. So this is. This is one of those on one hand, on the other hand, and what we need is a good one-handed economist, that whole joke. So, <clears throat> all right. Um, what else do we have? We have Fant. Let's look at ABAX, uh, Sol. Where, uh, where do we have ABAX and Sol? These are the 3X leverage tokens. We don't look at those. We want to look at the underlying. 
for the most part. Okay. You can look at those afterward. Uh, we've got Adam. Don't want to look at Adam. Somebody said AVAX. Why isn't AVAX in our list here? Here's AVAX. Huh. The Gala, get, Gala Games got delisted, apparently. Hmm. At least on uh, probably that's Coinbase. Uh, but so AVAX, um, AVAX doesn't the same thing, man. It, it doesn't look good here. Uh, who asked that? Uh, David, um, don't like this 2150 day moving down. Don't have a recent bullish ERI. TSI is under 20 red signal. I, I'd say AVAX not worth looking at. Uh, Gala Games, Coinbase delisted Gala Games. So that's off our list. Uh, XRP, no, I'm going to put CRV, just, huh, CRV, I've just, my spidey sense said click on a couple of these, all green radar on CRV though, but we don't have an ERI, TSI, starting to turn up though, I don't know, I like that green radar, uh, but I don't like that it's in this downward trending channel. Yeah, you know, I just I would err on the side of caution, you guys. I'm not a big fan of bottom fishing and buying buying dips are one thing. That's a dip is a pullback to support. We are below the these are resistance zones now. Cadena, look, Cadena looking pretty ugly here. Uh we want to watch for signs of strength and, and bounces, but um I didn't get and ask about these. I'm just clicking down through these. All right, uh disappointed. Well, we've got looks rare. I had a nice little bounce. But in, it's in a downward trending channel. If you guys are wanting to play the short side, though, you can play these three X shorts. Just uh, you know, the with these signals uh, match up to the downside as well. Um, all right, what else? I think there was a Phantom Sol Sol where's Solana? Somebody said Helium Coin. I mean, Helium had a dollar. <clears throat> Excuse me, but it doesn't mean it can't go to fifty cents. And since Helium moved over. Um, yeah, so they they shut down their own blockchain to move on to Solana. <clears throat> that couldn't have been good for their overall prospects. But uh, ultimately, um, sorry, I'm I'm hesitating because I remember I just remembered I turned off my helium miner. I don't know. I'm trying to not have unnecessary electronics running all the time. Uh, but Helium has the potential to make money, you guys. Keep that in mind. They have a revenue model uh, that, uh, and they're publicly funded and funded by, you know, so they they ultimately can make money on the Internet of Things, but it's still early. That's why I just think Helium at a dollar <clears throat> makes sense. Excuse me, I'm just kind of getting over something. But, um, but you know, may not quite get there. And uh, having... You know, a thousand helium and just hold on to it forever uh, is 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 really the name of this game, you guys. I mean, long term projects. If you can buy a thousand of something that has potential uh, for a dollar, a thousand dollar, you know, just hold on to it. You know, think of Netflix, Amazon, some of these big name players. But um, I don't, you know. Don't know. Who knows? So um, looks rare again, looking like it's getting a bounce, probably hit resistance here. Uh, I wouldn't be really buying anything, guys, except for maybe Litecoin here, but uh, always use a tight stop. Uh, and, but we we're in a waiting pattern. So you're not missing anything. Don't have FOMO, please. There's not uh, missing out here. Pirate Chain is one of those that, hey, we did great on Pirate Chain. This thing just has no, almost no volume. You know, if you want to buy a lottery ticket, you'll get some Pirate Chain. but. You know, Mike recommended that way back in the 2020. And it's just fun to say pirate chain, R, right? But a thing went up like 67,000%. That was almost 100x. And, uh, but it's, you know, it's not in an uptrend. Let's just put it that way. But you can see I've got alert set when it kind of breaks back above local tops. Maybe I dabble there. I wouldn't probably be dabbling down at these levels. All right, you guys. Uh, let's see. I think you guys have one more. Solana. Where is Solana? Why isn't it on our list here? Did I miss it? Let's see. OXT. You know, for if you guys are bottom fishers, there's a couple bottom fishing coins here. You've got OXT getting an ERI TSI, but it's so hard at these bottoms. Like in retrospect, it's easy to go, oh, look at that. We should have bought it back there, but it's not easy to tell. Uh, somehow Solana disappeared from our list. Not sure how that happened. Uh, like Solana USD. 
Okay, uh, let's see, let me add that to our watch list. Yeah, somehow I deleted it off of our watch list accidentally. All red on the radar. Um, well, you know, okay. <clears throat> Maybe Solana's one to play on the downside, getting a bearish uh, ERI. Hopefully you're not, we weren't asking me for bullish reasons. Um, but it's, uh, you know, just the volume's so low. There's nothing that screams buy or just do anything here for me. Clearly to the downside, I guess we could pull up a Solana 3X. Do we have one? Let's see, Sol 3. Oops. I really would like to find something for you guys to trade and make some money on. So three active trader list. There's that. Sol 3X. And let's move that up into our threes. Onto the shorts. Okay. Leverage long. So, you know, um, bullish ERI on this, on the 3S, the 3 uh, leverage short. But um, the, the TSI questionable. I, I would I would look at this at a break above here at 35 cents. But these things move fast when there's momentum. When they drift sideways, they, they don't really make money. <clears throat> you know, these are leveraged tokens on a move. On a decent size move, they can do well. Like here, that was 158%. What were the clues there? We had an ERI uh, and a TSI breaking above 20, green signal line and a bell. Pretty clear, right? Um, here we had an ERI, TSI signal and bell, but wasn't nearly as exciting in this one here. It was just a little bit of a move. Uh, 63 percent though so that's why these these three x tokens are misleading though they they can it doesn't look like they move much but percentage wise they are problem is it's uh, tsi is overbought on this uh the the here here's what i let's zoom in on this though okay well here we may have something what does this look like this is a little tiny rocket here on the um you, you know, and I hesitate a little bit because these are the rockets not designed to be an in inverse indicators, tend to be in bullish scenarios. So take that with a grain of salt. But uh, the characteristic of that is this long tail and the real body closing near the high. And traditionally, we want to see it at a support zone like this 21 day moving average. Now this is on Gate IO, which is obscure. I was I, I didn't see it on KuCoin, so that's the other negative. But let's just say for uh, PG thirteen is kicks and giggles, right? Shits and giggles here. So uh, let's get fourteen percent possible. It's not really that exciting, but a win is a win, and trade is a trade. So. If you guys like that, you'd certainly be making small trades on these if you plan on trading. But um, I'll let you guys decide. Uh, let's see. So I think we've covered all of these of FTM, uh, INJ. Did we look at INJ? I don't think INJ is on our list. Let's see. INJ. Uh, let's see. We, did, we didn't look at the total market cap. You guys need to remind me of these things. Uh, let's take a look at the overall market cap. But so INJ. Uh, bearish engulfing candle below the 21 to 50 day moving average. Uh, not looking good. Okay, enough about that. So let's do this. Let's hop back over to the master list here. We did uh, we did not look at that. Let's look at the 3X long on Bitcoin, 3X short on Bitcoin. Uh, in uh, inconclusive, uh, the Bitcoin uh, dominance pushing higher, trying to push higher. That's uh, interesting there. Oops. And ETH dominance dropping. Yes, we haven't looked at this in a little while here. We have this uh, big Chevron. So ETH dominance just it's 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 been going sideways so long. It's now failed this upward trending pattern. I can't keep widening this thing. It's it's lost its relevancy. It's really, I mean, it's we don't know. We'll have to wait and see how it plays out. Uh USDT dominance still on a rise, more people going into stablecoin than uh the uh, current um 
crypto uh, total markets, total market cap still holding above a trillion, you guys. But we having having some resistance here at that level, that one point two five trillion. And uh, I'll go out when in doubt, zoom out. So where we look back, pretty significant resistance level. But we need to hold that trillion level. It's rolling over, though. It's not looking really good. Keep an eye on this. You guys should have this. I have my alert set at just at a trillion. And if we start breaking down lower, these are when you would want to go 3x short Bitcoin, you know, when these start crossing down below. Now, that's a five-day chart. So let me do a two-day chart to smooth it a little bit. Uh, you know, but just uh, just limping along here. I just not a whole lot we can see from any of this. So that's all we have time really well. We, it's all we have to look at here today. There's not much else happening. We could pull up the crypto pair screener. Do you guys have anything else? Oh, six more messages. Sorry, guys. It's not it's not scrolling down for me. Gala changed to V2 and Coinbase didn't do the switch, only if you had it as an ERC wallet. Okay. Uh STX. Let's see. Let me jump back over to our actor trader and then we'll look at ST. What was it? STX. Okay, we've got that. Well, we want to look at that coin of stacks. Yeah, wasn't this uh Mike's one of Mike's picks? XTS was a moon a moon stream pick last year, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um it's recovered fairly well this year. Uh, why don't we add that to our watch list? Okay. And these are not micro caps, though. I'll clean that up later. But, you know, it's 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 down below the 21 to 50, you guys. I don't want to, really don't want to be bottom fishing unless we start getting some really solid bounces. But, I mean, keep in mind, this, well, this is this is interesting. So where would we want to put a buy alert on this, potentially? We've got an ERI. Uh, a TSI going green would be good, obviously. But purely from a this ascending a symmetrical triangle here, uh, we'd want to see a break out of that. So I want to see it basically back above 75 cents, pressing up, personally, to, to de-risk that trade. You know, I... So, and above the 21 and 50, those are going to be your, your strongest bets. You guys, we've got red, mostly red on the radar. Let's keep an eye on it, but um, don't think it's uh, quite there yet. Uh, let's see, watch your EMF exposure, Brett. Yeah, you know, I've got my helium miner. I'm looking at it and it's about uh, eight feet away. And I just, I don't know, I wasn't feeling well and could be any number of things, but um, you know, these cheap things that comes out of, you know, where and, uh, you know, new new technology things aimed right at my head. I've got enough of this stuff going on with my Wi-Fi and uh, all these monitors beaming right at my eyeballs. Uh, that reminds me to put on my blue blocking glasses here, which are now on. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, EMF. Okay, so it turns out there was a wallet issue that caused the massive pirate chain pump to 16. Um. I, did, did, did it pump to 16? What am I looking at? I've got pirate chain. I had not at 16, 34 cents. Although I remember there was some pricing discrepancies with pirate chain. Uh, I used to buy it on Bittrex, but Bittrex is gone now. So I'm not even sure where you would buy this. Uh, it looks like hit BTC. Uh, let's see. Can you send a link out to the active trader list? Sure can, Jim. Uh, let's do that. Uh, so copy link. And uh, I'm going to put it in the active trader group because um, in all fairness, some of you are crypto mastery, have the indicators. If you'd like more information about our list and the active trader service where we do this and really unpack coins, et cetera, go to crypto, sorry, moonstream.io slash M3. So M3 watch list. So the link is now in that uh, private chat. So again, you guys have access to me. 24 seven in the uh, private chat there. Uh, all righty. Um, injective indeed. Okay. It jumped to $16. 
Oh, I see. Pirate chain. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I mean, wow. That was, and we had somebody send us a, te a testimonial which just said they, they were dumbfounded. They were like, my net worth has never been this high in my life. Thank you so much. Mike is, gets all the credit for that. But that's the thing just, uh, so, you know, I mean, this thing may live to see another day, but I don't want to ride it any lower. Uh, I mean, there are some that I would, let me just jump over. Here, I got about 10 more minutes here, but let me just jump over some of these other ones that I was holding on to. You know, like that I finally gave up on like Boson protocol. I still have alerts on these because if they can get back to their old highs, you might want to write these down. I mean, this is uh 15 X. If you know 1500% is 15 X. Uh, let's see. And uh sis coined, you know, these just got bludgeoned. I mean, it's a damn shame. It was a beautiful chart there for a while. And uh, then, like everything else, came down. But I mean, Syscoin, they have a really cool project. I mean, I think so. I have alerts set. You see, common pattern here. I have alerts set when these things start coming back and breaking new highs. And uh, and I want to know about that, but I don't want to buy them if they're still going down. So I like to buy into strength personally. SRM, obviously, disappointment. Another FTX. I had a bunch of that too. I finally dumped it, but um. Um, you know, just because OGN, I mean, I still like the story behind OGN trying to bottom might not be bad in this area, but you know, they, they are yet to be revenue positive. These are the guys that founded YouTube lead, en lead engineer. So one of the things I encourage you to do read up on projects, take the time, see which of these do I think will survive long-term. And which will go up the most, even just to get up to their old highs. Now, this is a 35X, 3,500 to get back to its old highs, you know. But uh, it's, you know, these things are not going to happen right away. But they, when they start to bottom, it looks like it's trying to bottom here. So uh, that's uh, Origin Token. And, you know, there's a bunch of these. There's definitely diamonds in the rough here that one day will run again. But it's, uh, you know, just watch charts, make notes, look into the ones that you liked back then. But uh, it's going to be a whole new mm, cabal, I guess is the right word, of new high flyers in the next bull run. But I, I have to say I'm impressed by this Litecoin here. Uh, overall, uh, this looks, um, well, <laughs> it looks both ominous and exciting. So it's it's got to pick a direction. You know, the, the, things either break out or break down. Uh, they It won't move sideways forever. This is the one to keep an eye on. I've got alerts to the upside. You know, if you start seeing Litecoin breaking down below 74, 75, then that would be a time to buy a, a 3X short on that. If you can find that probably in KuCoin. Uh, you know, not financial advice, information and education only. All right, guys, last chance. Uh, anything else you want to look at? Uh, did Mike finally post a May pick? I, I don't know, David. That's a good question in the Facebook group. Probably not. Probably not. Because oftentimes no trade is better than a losing trade. There's nothing really bullish out here. And we don't cover shorting in Moonstream. So, you know, that's... um. Probably he's why he's probably waiting. And uh, so, um, by the way, you guys, I will mention this. We're going to reopen Moonstream M3 uh, next week. We have some affiliates promoting that. If you guys would like to earn a commission on referring somebody, you know, um, the likely the we likely we are closer to a bottom. The ideal time to get involved with us is now ish, you know, is now. We'll start learning this concepts because I think July, June, July are going to run. And uh, we'll see some kind of an end of the year rally, you know, going into the end of the year. If, if you know, obviously if we default and all of that, uh, it's, uh, you, you know, expect volatility, but it's going to resolve at some point. It's to the markets pace themselves out six months in the stock market. So if we have a big bloodletting and, an, and a ma massive capitulation, you know, those are the historically best times to buy. And we have the indicators to show us exactly when. So if you have any friends or trading, 
or people you care about that you want to get into this, the program, uh, reach out to us. We can give you a referral link. We'll do a, a next Thursday, not this Thursday, next Thursday uh, presentation on that and going over everything that's included. Uh, but uh, we, um, uh, we'll we pay a 40% commission on that because, you know, just we have marketing costs. It's sort of a hard cost and and that way uh, I can go toward your next renewal. So I am aware this is not free and you guys, you're, there's opportunity costs of time and energy and all of this. And I know we've learned a lot, but uh, as going sideways stuff is uh, not exciting for us. So I'm trying to keep it new and um, continue to add value here. If you guys have anything you want to see that we're not already doing, also, let me know, open to feedback. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I think sticking with these core concepts, all, you know, by now, repetition is the mother of all learning. So you we're going to keep talking about the same things over and over again. And uh, and that's how you'll, you'll really cement that information. I guess one thing we could look at that we haven't looked at in a while are these uh, pockets of uh, where is this indicator here? Somehow it got turned off, but I had on my one hour, four hour charts, the uh, liquidity or the pockets where these, um, if we wanted to look at that here briefly, but where did it go? I lost that thing. It is, I forgot what the thing's called. What is, uh, no, all right, I have to find it. It's, a, it's an indicator that uh, it's it's uh, not ours, but it is, let's see, what's this on the four hour? Four hour bearish ERITSI signal. So we're bearish on the four hour, guys. It looks like we are going to come back down. But again, I've been saying this for weeks. And here I just I just deleted that. But here you see this. Let me open this up. You know, you're in good hands, and you know, even though we cover the same things every week, make sure you're watching the nuggets here. I drew this in back in early May, this kind of squiggle and dump. It played out almost exactly. So went up a bit higher than I thought, came down, dumped, took a little longer, but this is where I think we're headed, down to 25.5. So that's what's next. It's going to dump down to 25.5. I would be looking and watching to buy in the 25,300 to 25,500 range. You know, we've got our TSIs coming down. This is a four hour. So just an indication, at least for the next day or so, we could see some further downside. You know, then we could see a nice little bounce, but watch your four hour charts for early indications uh, to finish that thought on that indicator. It, it's called uh, the a number of these. And didn't know if I, uh, which one was it? Somehow it got deleted out of my account. It was sort of the, um, it's made by Lux Algo, but it's not coming up here. Maybe I'll have to find it. It's maybe one of these price actions and uh, concepts, supply, demand, pivot, high, low, maybe average, just well, I forgot what I called that thing. It was, um, I'll have to dig that up. Something along these lines. It shows, it it's kind of shows where the liquidity is. And uh, so this basically shows that there's buyers here and then there's sellers up in this range, you know, but um, our signals are also calling those levels, you know, ERITSI nailed it earlier. So you don't need this other indicator. Just uh, just thought I'd share that with you. So anyway, guys, uh, I think that's all I have time for. Um, Pirate, Ch Private J says, uh, our, I do love the Pirate Chain song. Yeah, you know. Uh, it's, uh, it's so, it's fun. You know, meme coins are fun. The pirate chain, uh, the whole angle there is fun. So, but, uh, watch this Ethereum, by the way. And I think the Ethereum, it's, um, if we can get this TSI up above 20, then I think we could see a nice push higher. If we get back above the 21 and 50 day moving averages, then we are in good shape. But I don't know if we do. So, you know, we want to see what plays out here. And again, staying out, when in doubt, stay out, everybody. So uh, that's it for this week here. Get some good swag at the conference. Yeah, you know, and uh, what I want to do is I've got my video guy coming down. So so basically we're doing a big pirate, I got me thinking pirate chain, you guys. Uh, we're doing a big uh, crypto summit. It's going to be likely called the Future of Cryptocurrency Summit. And um, we're going to have 30 or so top uh, speakers. And so Max Wright will be a speaker. 
So uh, the guy that's uh, putting this on is a friend. He's uh, he's done a lot of these kind of uh, crypto virtual summits. So basically, um, hopefully, to going to do a live interview with Max and uh, some other people down at the show. So we're going to go up to booths and and uh, <clears throat> get introductions and record things and. Uh, I'll be sharing uh, some video clips uh, from the show as well. So hopefully I uh, get some good alpha like last year when Jack Mallers got up there on stage and, and showed the video where he went into a convenience store and bought a six pack of beer and, and then with Coke, all with Bitcoin on the lightning network, just uh, super fast. So this is, um, this is happening. It's just going to take a while. You were, you we're uprooting the entire world financial system uh, system rather is not happen easily overnight so anyway guys i gotta run i need to get some things to myrene uh that was a good 90 minute class glad you enjoyed and uh so if anything meaningful happens overnight i'll shoot a quick video tomorrow but i'm off to the airport midday and uh uh you know the wi-fi is not that good yet although it would be fun to do a lot class from the plane my pe people around me may not like it very much, but uh, it'd be fun to stream a class at 30,000 feet. See you guys. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks again and um, have a great week, everyone. I will keep you posted. And uh, uh, next time you hear from me, probably be from the Bitcoin show. But um, uh, if any of you guys do wind up going down there, uh, I highly recommend it. You can reach out and we can do a meetup one of these years. I was trying to put together like a mastermind thing, but didn't seem to have the interest. Maybe uh, when we all get rich on Pirate Chain by next year, you guys will come down. On that note, uh, thanks very much, guys. We'll see you later and um, appreciate you. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. See you.